I'm Scott Al Miller. It's the 14th of January, 2023. Today is Saturday, and I meant to make today a big recording day. I was going to get out, do a bunch of walking and exploring, and I was going to go film the old house in Labarillo, and I ended up having to do nothing but work the entire day. I had a single phone call that went on for six hours. However, I am now filming in the future because I had no time today to record today, and I am here in Marquedito, Sutiava. This is the outdoor market. I'm just going to show it to you. You have seen it on the show before, but only for a few seconds. This is, it's called the Little Market, Marquedito, but this is the big market here in Sutiava. It is in the middle of the street. This is Nika 14, also known as Ruben Dario. This is the main road. If we were to head, I'm not going to step into the road because of all the traffic, but if we were to head down that way straight, you would end up at the Basilica. And if we head this way down the street, we end up at the beach. Buenas tardes. And this right here is the bus that will be taking people to the beach. This is the stop for it, the Marcadito stop. This area is very, very busy all the time and is one of the main places for getting fruit. Hola, buenas tardes. Fruit and produce here in this part of the city. So just it is always busy. And a lot of these places are open 24 hours because it is easier to stay open. This is a ruta coming in for some of the, the very local traffic and uh, they stay open 24 hours because it's easier to keep everything open and provide security simply by having people there rather than trying to uh, do so by uh, closing things up or taking it away or whatever. So uh, this this area is just thriving. It's also a huge traffic jam. The only, the only thing that really protects it is the fact that this uh, road that we're on, Nicaragua 14, goes forward only to the beach and to nowhere else. And so there's no through traffic. Um, there is some farmland out there, but very, very little. There's no large centers of population. The biggest things are Ponaloy and Las Benitas. So if you're headed this way, you're either going to the very, very end of Sutiava, we're already past most of the population of the barrio, or you're headed to the open land between here and the beach, or you are headed to the beach proper. And so the amount of traffic going through here is limited, but it is enough to be a non-stop traffic jam here at Marcadito. I also want to get, I don't know what this wall is. I've never actually investigated this, but it is a long wall with this really cool embankment and uh, it could be anything in there. I can kind of see in, it's probably just houses, but it could be a school, it could be any number of things. Uh, lots of neat houses and little businesses along this zone, uh, but all behind high walls because it's very steep ground everywhere. You can see this is not we get a lot of uh, uneven roads in Leon, but here in Sutiava, this particular section just west of the Marcadito has some of the steepest ground in the city. And you really notice it here, this really stupid dog running between like three cars all at once. My gosh. Some of these beautiful side streets. This is an area of Sutiava that's very poorly known. If you are not uh, a local, you don't tend to come out here at all. This is So this is an area where, uh, as a tourist, You'll drive through here, obviously going to the beaches. There's a ton of people driving by, but there are absolutely no foreigners past Marcadito. They all know Marcadito. They all stop there to get on the bus, and that is the end of it. So this area becomes incredibly local and starts getting pretty quiet pretty quickly, uh, which of course makes it a little bit more interesting. I'm holding the camera in less than an ideal spot because I actually have another camera on my chest, and we're going to see how well that turns out. I'm doing an experiment. Again, I'm doing it tomorrow. And the exciting thing about tomorrow, you got to watch the show, is I do manage to go back to the house in Labarillo and film it for you. So we're going to do a complete house walkthrough of the house. You've seen lots of little bits of it uh, over the past year. We were living there since uh, mid-January of 2022, and uh, I never did a full walkthrough of it, as I often don't, while we're currently living in a house. Uh, and I always try to do, when we leave a house, to do a full walkthrough for everyone as a... Uh, well, it's, it's interesting, I think, for the viewers, uh, but it's really important for uh, my family to have a way to remember where we have lived because we move around so much. Now, of course, this is a bit interesting. Actually, I want to stop because this is a kind of thing. I don't know how well the light's going to help me here. This is a non-driving road that goes through, and there's, these come up in, in Leon and in different areas uh, fairly often. And I love these because you can't drive through. You can get a motorcycle through. So if you live in one of these little pedestrian ways, you can bring a motorcycle or a bicycle through, but a car is not gonna come through. This one's a little bit different because it has a bit of a elevation change. So it has to be able to handle quite a bit of water pouring through it, but it makes for some really interesting living uh, because you get these 
cute pedestrian areas uh, to live on. Um, that's the first I've noticed this one in Sutiava. One of the things that I really notice as I walk in these areas is, is you notice so much more on foot than you do when you drive, which of course, I mean, it just goes without saying, right? But I've been living here for so long and I've walked a lot of this, but a lot of times I walk it in the dark or I walk the other side of the road or whatever. And so you notice different things depending on the time of day or where you are, or whether or not I'm looking at the camera while I talk or whatever. When it's are these? And uh, so always finding, always finding something new. Uh, so today, Saturday, I started the morning. I was all like, oh, it's going to be a really great day. I'm going to be productive. I have all these plans. I was planning on coming out to the house to film. And, uh, and that did not happen. Um, I got started the day just a little bit in the morning. I had, um, I had breakfast made for me and had um, egg and cheese uh, breakfast quesadilla, which is fantastic. Oh, that's so nice being able to have that made at home. And uh, I'm just gonna, real quickly, just so you know where I am. So that is the city bus, not the beach bus that's coming down right there. That is the Eskimo on the corner. This is a fairly busy commercial corner just down from the market. You see the girls with the yellow and red uh, fried chicken shirts on. And then this is the Colegio Calasans that a lot of people mention on the channel when people are talking about, oh, is there a good private school? Is there a place you can go or whatever? Where would you recommend? A number of graduates of this school uh, have piped up and said they recommend it. They really liked it. It is a beautiful facility in a great part of town. It's close to the city, uh, but it is also far enough out that uh, it's, uh, it feels kind of countryside-ish, and it has a beautiful field beyond it, field meaning sports field, uh, for playing. So you can see the Calisans up there. I'm just going to show this. This building, if someone wanted to buy this and turn it into something, it's got a lot of potential, and I'm pretty sure it's abandoned. When is that this? All right. So walking past the school, I'll show you the sports field. I did on the episode where we went to uh, Parque Arlen Sioux, uh, I showed uh, the, the Colegio Calasans at that point as well, but that's been quite some time and uh, we're walking that same way. So we'll just uh, keep on going, show what I can. Um, so I ended up having an emergency at work, work emergency, right? Not like a real emergency and ended up on a single call with Ozzy for six hours, right on the nose, five hours, 59 minutes and 30 seconds, just on the phone call alone, not including any like setup for the call, wrap up stuff, anything like that. Six hours, it was such a long day. That whole time I wasn't, luckily I'd already had breakfast and I'd had a cup of coffee and I had one with me when it started. So, cause I didn't have time to grab water, coffee, food, anything all day. Now, luckily one of the reasons it's so amazing having a live-in chef, I was able to text Yao and say, oh, I'm stuck on this call. Please make me lunch. And she did. So she brought me lunch while I was working. And uh, this is a cute boulevard. I want to show this. So this is a part of Sutiava that I know only from the maps. I've never been down this road. Or maybe I've been down this road, but very, very little. And I have no idea what's here. But it's a beautiful boulevard. Here, I'm just going to look at this beautiful boulevard here. Small houses, but cute. And then on this, so that the middle is nice, this side really well manicured. And then look how beautiful this place is, this great brick wall. I talked about this recently, how much I like the cylinder style. It's just a local style or, or something. And then this really great entryway, great palms in there. And even down the wall, they've got ivy and stuff that's well maintained. No idea what we got here, but it feels like you would step into a gorgeous restaurant or something right here. I'm kind of looking through the cracks and the, there's a... There's something really attractive back there. I think it's just a grand house, but there's always these great things nestled in. It's maybe it's like the administrators of the school or something, who knows, but it's, uh, it's really cool looking. You just never know what you're going to find. And from the outside, right, this is just a grassy wall. So like who would guess that there's something interesting in there, right? And that's so much of Central America is designed that way that you just zip by and it would never guess. And if you specifically stopped on the road and said, what about that place? You'd say, well, I, I guess it could be anything, right? Sometimes you look at things, you go, well, that's terrible. Sometimes you look at it and you go, that's fantastic. But most of the time you go, I just, uh, who knows, right? And oh shit, I caught myself. That was a full, completely lost my balance. I was sure I was falling and I'm carrying two cameras, my phone and my watch. And I'm like, I can't fall. And I caught myself. I'm impressed because I have no free hands. Oh, 
that might be the entrance to these houses there that are really nice and expensive and I know nothing about them. Who knows? Interesting. All right, I'm going to pay a little bit more attention to where my feet go now because I'm definitely not going to catch myself the second time that happens. I wonder what that's going to look like. I had two cameras rolling, I think, at the time that that happened. <sighs> Nothing like falling over like an idiot and recording it twice, right? That's... The other one's, uh, uh, it's leveled. It's got a lot of, a lot of technology to level the image. So maybe it'll level out me falling and you won't really notice. I'm going to turn around and show you this. So this is right now, not the season for anything. So there's not much to see, but this is the Colegio Calasanz soccer field, football field. And this is the Calasanz bus stop here in Western Sutiava. This is a beautiful field. You get to it from the other side. I think the public can actually get in there, but not easily and not from the road. So you're not going to just wander in. And I've never walked over here. So there's a little community. So you've got this big drainage ditch and the water flows back there in what must be a torrent. And then you can kind of see there's a little community back there that has a little path along here that they've been using, probably because this is the easiest access up to the road, but very interesting for sure. All right. Check the map. We are definitely on the very far western edge of Sutiava. We're, we're kind of leaving civilization and heading out into the where the barrio ends and the open, I guess, unincorporated Sutiava begins. This entire region is technically Sutiava, but only some of it is the barrio. And uh, Buenas tardes. That's like a afternoon church barbecue lunch, I think. This is a really large church with no signs. So uh, I'll do my best to, to show it as we come by. It's a really big church, but it's, and I've seen it like packed with people. And there's some people in there now, but it's like this just giant open space. It's like a, a church built like a barn. For the longest time, I thought it was a barn. I thought it was like where they did cattle shows. But on Sundays, which today I'm filming this on a Sunday, I'm filming this tomorrow. It, uh, uh, it, it fills up and they have big church services and music and, and just normal church there. So who knows? I am just now coming through the matching Kalasan's uh, bus stop on this side. They're a little bit separate from each other. So I'll show that. It's actually really cute. We got like bamboo or something behind it. And I've never seen it open, but there's this little snack stand that in theory, when times are good, would open up there. So, I mean, the, the work ended up going well today and we got a lot of problems resolved and and it's good to have work. I can't complain that there's work. Like certainly that's, that's really good. And it was, it was a very hectic day because of that. By the time work was done, like I was exhausted. I didn't want to do anything. And I still had like things to do, but the sun was down. So I couldn't record anything for you guys. I didn't get to go out for a walk like I'd wanted to. I didn't get to film like I wanted to. I didn't get to edit like I wanted to. I was not happy about that. That was rough. But, but all that said, uh, the day went well. Um, and in the evening, I just relaxed. I did a little bit of video editing. The girls wanted to hang out on their own. So they just, they're watching TV together. They like to watch things, pause it, do commentary. And uh, I'm going to spin this around. We've shown all this before. This is the San Sebastian Cemetery here. And then it's, it's a uh, bus stop. And actually, I want to show this. What a, what a pretty tree and little spot here. And what is this business? And then there's the Leon Ponoloya sign. Ah, Quinta Vis something Vicente. I see. Very interesting. So that's, that is a really attractive place. You can see this is meant, if you're not used to it, this is meant for keeping cattle from crossing. And this is a Quinta, right? So it is a uh, semi farm. It is a luxury weekend country farm. And we're a little bit close to the city, but that has to be the first one. But a popular thing in any Nicaraguan city, most of Latin America, is outside of cities, people will have large estates for the, the wealthier residents. And they will live uh, or come out on the weekends. And it's like a weekend home because it's lots of fresh air. And it's nice to throw parties and have family out and hang out. And so they're called quintas. A finca is a working farm, like where you would have cattle and, and agriculture and and work people work all the time and ride around on their horses and produce things a quinta 
is similar to a Finca, but it's really, its function is to be a getaway weekend home uh, that could function potentially as a farm, but that's not its primary purpose. That yard back there with the dog running around just all fenced in like that for some reason just reminds me of the northern United States and doesn't fit in my mind as Nicaragua at all. Paul and I were talking today about just how much we've adapted to the temperatures. Because this is summer here. This is the hot season. It's not April. April is the absolute hot, hottest month. So that's a little bit different. But this is a really hot part of the year. And there's no rain. And last year and the year before, when we were here during, during this kind of time, we, I guess we weren't really here. Yeah, we were here. And it was, it was killer. And in 2019, we were here at a, at a cooler than this time. And it was just hot. And we were dying. And we're sweat. Anywhere you went, you were just covered in sweat. And you just going to dinner in a taxi, you'd be all sweaty. And you'd, be like, and, and you'd sit there going, oh my gosh, I need a fan. I need air conditioning. I just, how do you do it? And now it is, it's got to be like one o'clock in the afternoon. And I'm out for a walk in summer in bright sun. And I've got a backpack on and a hat. And I've been out doing stuff all day long. I was going to show some of this beautiful area here. And people out for a walk, lots of people out for a walk. And then this beautiful, I think this is actually still part of the school, it's like the bus yard or something. I think those are the, where you put the buses on the ramps. If you can see it over there, I think you put buses on those ramps for maintenance. I think that's an outdoor garage area or it used to be long ago. And then that's the wall. And we're coming up on the outer range of the, of the university, I think, LaSalle University. Anyway, uh, and now we go out in the morning and we have our coffee and we sit outside and we go, I'm kind of chilly. And I go out for a walk in the middle of the day. And yeah, I mean, I'm a little bit sweaty, but very little and completely comfortable. Like I don't, I don't feel hot in any way whatsoever. And I don't feel particularly sweaty except for the backpack. And this is completely pleasant. And I can walk like this the entire day, as long as I put a little bit of sunscreen on my nose. Uh, it's just amazing how in less than two years we have gone from, and the breeze right now actually feels a little bit cool. And we have gone from it being so unbearably hot to it being so unbearably pleasant all the time. We love it, love it, love it, love it. And, and I'm in the hot part of the city. Like, it's not like I'm at the house in the country where yes, it feels a little bit cooler because you're out in the country. Sure, when I get there, it'll be even more pleasant. But right now walking in the sun, in it with all the concrete, it's just, it feels great. It's so nice. I love going out for a walk. So anyway, Saturday night, I, uh, I gave up on dinner. I'm like, I'm not even, I'm not even gonna try. Yao had gone home for the day by the time I was done with work. I'd had lunch and breakfast, so I mean, I was fine. And, and I have been eating healthier. That, that is true, that has been happening. Uh, and I just, I, I decided I wanted some wine. This is a really cute house, really neat little spot nestled back here. There's some statues, really nice lawn, some great, it's, it's nothing big. There's a really pretty property back there, I hope. I hope that shows up on the video. I have no idea if you'll be able to see it. It's kind of hard to see here. This whole fence is really nice. I mean, it's, it's certainly older and, wow. Ooh, quite nice. I love Sutiava, really do. Um, so I'm like, I want some wine, but there's nothing in the house. So, so I used Ugo. I took a page out of April's book and I used Ugo to bring me wine. And they brought me bottles of wine. It was fantastic. So I hung out, uh, poured myself some, uh, some, some, I can't even remember what I had. Sauvignon Blanc, thank you, from Chile. Most of our wine here seems to come from Chile. We get Spain, we get Italy, get a little bit of Argentina, but the vast majority, from what I can tell, is, is from Chile. And uh, I had that and I put on uh, Till Money Do Us Part, which is a new, I think like, like really new, like the last month or so, uh, Netflix telenovela filmed in Colombia with Carmen Villa Lobos, which who, she's absolutely fantastic. I've loved her since she was a teenager doing Sensenos. And uh, uh, hung out with the dogs and watched that for a little bit in Spanish. No English subtitles, just doing it in Spanish, which does make it quite challenging. Buenas tardes. Uh, but it was, uh, uh, it was fun, 
and that was it. That was my evening. Did really nothing. No one was around. Everyone kind of was off doing their own thing. And I was like, you know what? I'm kind of, I'm kind of in for just hanging with the dogs, having some wine, and watching a, a telenovela. I can do that. That's my relaxing day. So that was my evening. That was my day. And uh, today's you know, topic is whoa, there's a bit of wind and dust there. Is walking around Sutiava. So I'm going to wrap up here for the day real quickly. Uh, put myself back on the screen there. And this is perfect if you wanted a little business or a tiny house. I don't know where that goes. Look how far back the building goes, though. This is not a not a tiny building. It's just a small frontage. This is right on the road and right here. So this is the one of the really exclusive neighborhoods here in the city. And this is its bus stop out here. This would be a great spot for a little restaurant or a pulperia, of course, but the, I mean, don't, don't, expats do not need to open pulperias. That is definitely a thing for locals to do. Um, but it's a, it's a neat spot that has potential to, to service a small community out here. And if someone put in a restaurant there that was something different, I would be, I would be thrilled with that. That would be, that would be neat. Anyway, it's a cute little spot or you could just live there, whatever. And uh, I'm at the, the, the Puente Arlencio. So I'm just gonna turn around. I've shown all this before, but never, never on the show have I walked over the bridge. I've walked to the bridge. If you go up this road, the Parque Arlen CU is right up there. And some houses we have looked at buying are right there in the in the shot. And lots that I've walked around there. And then this is one of the, the small waterways. I don't even know if there's water in it. it comes underneath the bridge here. Uh, Arlen CU, for those who do not know, this is the the child martyr. This is, she is not from here. Uh, she is from somewhere closer to Matagalpa. Now I can't remember exactly what town, um, but she was a teenager when she joined the revolution and was the uh, first, first really well-known minor uh, to be killed in the revolution. She was uh, the national singer-songwriter singer of Nicaragua at a very young age, very big, uh, important music star all over the country and gave her life for the cause and so she is one of the most important national heroes here in the country and uh, this is the largest memorial dedicated to her is the park and bridge here so it's a really large park and zoo here in Sutiava Leon and uh, you can see the waterway here is very small it's it's not a not a major spot in the city barely shows up on the maps and I'm gonna go record a different day we are just coming up. I'm just going to show this real quick so you know where we are. So we're crossing the bridge. That's where we were. Coming across the Arlen Sea Bridge. Let's walk over and see what the other side looks like. Since we're here, that would be, that would be foolish not to show it to you. This is the water where it is flowing. So it's flowing that way. And it goes along the park and the zoo of her name. There's something big going through the trees. It's probably a black squirrel, but it was black. And I can't say that I've ever seen a black squirrel here. So there's every chance that that was a monkey running through the tree. Uh, that's interesting. This is definitely the kind of area you would expect to see monkeys, but you don't normally see them so close to the city. So this beautiful forested area, I mean, that really is beautiful. The water turns around through there and you got the nice hill. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. No wonder they put this important memorial park there. And then this begins on the west side of the Puente Arlen CU is a whole different type of housing scenario that we have here in Sutiava. Uh, these are houses that are set halfway off the road. They're on the main road, but they have like their own little driveway. And there's multiple little developments like this. They're very small developments. And I'm going to do my best to have filmed them. I believe I will have shown them yesterday. So if you missed that, go back and watch yesterday. I'm going to record yesterday's episode right now. And uh, thanks for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. If you have any questions, get down in those comments. Leave them below if you'd like to support the channel. You can buy me a coffee from Dr. Coffee, the little place we just walked past. That's where I like to get coffee now. Um, we're actually going to go there tomorrow morning on the way to the house to film when I then do this. Oh, everything's out of order. My mind's going crazy. I can only imagine what it's like for you guys. And uh, I'll put a link down below and on the screen, buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. That is the one way you can directly support the channel. Other than that, just give us lots of likes, give us lots of subscribes, watch a couple extra episodes, leave them playing in the background. All that really helps. Tell your friends, post on social media, let people know about how exciting it is to learn about life here in Central America. And I 
We'll see all of you for the tour of the Labo Rio house. Tomorrow should be a big episode. I wanna see lots and lots of views and likes on that because everyone's gonna be anxiously waiting because you haven't seen that house in total for a year and it's time to check it out. I will see all of you from Labo Rio tomorrow.